So these are, um, I, I think they're the most interesting moons in our solar system, and they're all slightly unique from each other. They're a good way to compare and contrast some of the geological processes that happen on these outer solar system moons, because they all have very different surface features that are driven by their different geologies. So for example, Io is quite smooth. Europa has these characteristic cross-hatched um, straight line patterns. Um, Ganymede has some gashes, but also a heavy level of cratering. And then Callisto has mostly um, only cratering. Um, so these are arranged here, Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto from closest to Jupiter to farthest. Um, the Galilean moons are often called a mini solar system. And it is thought that uh, Jupiter's large moons formed in an accretion disk, similar to how the planets formed around the sun. So what do you think constitutes the best evidence that those moons formed in that way? All right, awesome. So I'm seeing a lot of votes for two, but also a lot of votes for five. So I would definitely agree that if we assume that Jupiter formed um, from a cloud collapse in the outer solar system, and then around Jupiter there was some disk of material, then if moons formed in, the, in that disk, there's four, but I'm lazy, so I'm only gonna draw three, we would assume that they would all be in the same plane, and that would be along the plane of Jupiter's equator. So we call that an equatorial orbit. Um, we would also assume that they'd probably orbit in the same direction that Jupiter rotates on its own axis. And these conditions are both met by the Galilean moons. Um, it's also true that they have densities that decrease with distance. So two, three, and four are all valid um, and all good reasons to think that they do resemble a mini solar system. So even though the planets in our solar system don't have a perfectly decreasing pattern of, of, of density, in general, the terrestrial worlds are more dense than the gas giants and outer planets, right? And so a similar pattern actually does play out for our Galilean moons. So if we look at our mini solar system moons, um, here is their composition that's driving their density. Io and Europa both have um, metallic cores, and then they both have rocky mantles. Io has a rocky mantle and it has a rocky crust as well, whereas Europa's crust is water ice. Um, Ganymede and Callisto are a little bit different. So Ganymede does have a lower mantle made of rocky material, but its upper mantle is made of water ice. And then Callisto is mostly undifferentiated, though there's some evidence that it has um, an underground ocean. So um, both Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto have underground oceans. We'll explore that a little bit later. Um, but Callisto is unique amongst these in being undifferentiated. So if we actually then look at their, a table of their distances from Jupiter and then their densities, then we can see the, the clear pattern that Io and Europa and Ganymede all go from high density near Jupiter to low density farther away. And um, we haven't talked about the solar system formation model in great detail. We'll do that in week 10. Um, but the reason for this is that the temperature near Jupiter as it formed would have been higher. So rocky materials and metals would have been able to condense out of that disk, whereas farther away, there would be ice available. So therefore Ganymede and Callisto would have gathered more ice than Io and Europa. So also interesting is that if you look at the orbital periods of Io, Europa, and Ganymede, if you multiply Io's orbital period by two, you get something very close to Europa's orbital period. If you multiply that by two, you get something very close to Ganymede's orbital period. So these planets, sorry, they're not planets, their moons, uh, experience what we would call an orbital resonance. So Io has an orbital resonance of, this is just expressed with, um, in terms of itself. So Io has a one-to-one -one resonance with it itself. That doesn't mean anything. Europa has two orbits for every, uh, sorry, one orbit for every two orbits of Io. 
And then Ganymede has one orbit for every four orbits of Io. And so for that reason, they periodically line up with each other. Uh, see if I can actually play this. Open this a little bit larger. So these will flash a color when they experience what we call a conjunction, which is when they are lined up in their orbits. And because they experience these periodic conjunctions with each other, then they can impact each other's tidal forces. 